Yeah, that's a good question. What, what role is the heat going to play here? Although we don't need heat for that. But the important thing to realize is these are not the only bonds that are going to get hydrolyzed. Who else is going to get hydrolyzed? The ester bonds. Remember, any carboxylic acid derivative can get hydrolyzed. That's the definition of a carboxylic acid derivative. So both these imide bonds and these ester bonds, all of those will get hydrolyzed. And then what's the role of the heat? Oh, it will decarboxylate the ion. Either the ion yeah. or the carboxyl. These are symmetric, so you can remove whichever one you want. But to make it look like what we're trying to get to, you might as well. Now, do we have the right conditions for decarboxylation? What do we need for decarboxylation? Carbonyl. Now we finally have the beta carbonyl uh, carboxylate. Here's the carboxyl group. And then on the beta carbon, there's another carbonyl. It happens to also be a carboxyl group, but that doesn't matter. We have a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid, so we can decarboxylate. And it's very easy to decarboxylate this. You just erase it. How many carbons do you lose when you do a decarboxylation? Um, one. Just one. The only carbon you lose when you do a decarboxylation is the carboxyl carbon. So we're not going to lose this carbon over here. Again, we're not going through the mechanism, but all that happens when you do a decarboxylation is you just lose the carboxy group. You don't lose anything else. I, and uh, we're only going to lose one of the carboxy groups. Because do we have the right conditions now for another decarboxylation? No, because no, we don't have a beta carbonyl anymore. So we're only going to lose one of these. They were symmetric, but we might as well lose the one on top because that makes this look like what we're trying to get down here. So uh, I combined a bunch of steps into one. So you got to watch out for H3O plus some heat. That can do a lot of things. What does H3O plus some heat do? So first of all, H3O plus will hydrolyze any, anyone who can get hydrolyzed. It will hydrolyze all the carboxylic acid derivatives. And then if there's heat, you have to check to see whether you can do, and what do you, what's the product of a hydrolysis? Carboxylic acid. So then you have to check for what possible decarboxylations. That's what the heat is for, to encourage the decarboxylation. Remember, you only do the decarboxylation if you have the, if you ended up with a beta carbonyl carboxy group. But that's what we ended up with here. Well, now we've, made, we've succeeded in doing what we wanted to do. We've made an amino acid. Which amino acid have we made? What's the side chain here? Glycine. Yeah, we made glycine. We made the most boring amino acid because we didn't put any interesting side chains on here. Uh, all right, so the basic idea of the Gabrielle synthesis, so notice that you start with this 1,3-dicarbonyl. And look, this doesn't look very similar to an amino acid, but this whole thing is going to get blown away by the decarboxylation, and this is going to get turned into the carboxyl group. So this really is the good way to make a uh, amino acid down here. Now, sorry? Um, if we just have the glycine right now, could we just, how would we add a whole other carbon chain? Put it in the side chain? Yeah. Yeah, now there's no good way. Instead, if we wanted to add a side chain, we should have done it at this point. How can we add a side chain to here? Oh, first add a base, then add a carbon chain. Oh, okay. Makes sense. This really is a malonic ester synthesis. This makes sure that the HPO is plus. I mean, HPO is plus. So there's just one extra step if we want to put it in a side chain. Why is it so easy to deprotonate this carbon here? Because of resonance. Yeah, it's because it's between the two carbonyl groups. It's doubly stabilized by resonance. So I haven't shown all the intermediates. But this base is going to put a negative charge on this alpha carbon. 
And then what type of reaction happens in step two? An SN2 reaction, when the negative alpha carbon attacks this Rx over here. That's going to put our side chain on. There's no way of putting two side chains on there, right? Not in this case, because there's no more hydrogens. However, amino acids never have more than one side chain. So we would need to, at least not naturally occurring amino acids. A naturally occurring amino acid is always, there's always four things attached to the alpha carbon. The amino group, the carboxy group, a side chain, and a hydrogen. In glycine, there's two hydrogens, but otherwise there's a, si a side chain and a hydrogen that are separate. So this is an excellent way to make amino acids. This really solves all our problems. We can always start with thalamide and um, this 1,3-dicarbonyl uh, over here, and then we can add pretty much any side chain that we want by uh, making the enolate and then doing an SN2, and then we can do the hydrolysis under hot conditions to break all the bonds we don't want and make carboxylic acids and do the decarboxylations.